Hi guys, how is everyone doing? Today we will be replacing the inner rod or also called the sacrificial rod of this water heater. It happens to be a 100 gallon Bradford White and it has two of them. Uh, with the 100 gallon Bradford White, they are the kind of uh, rods that uh, are in installed independently in the tank uh, with this um, hex uh, head. Um, that's for the 100 gallon. Now with the 40 and 50 and 30 uh, gallon brought for white, um, the inner rod is incorporated together with the hot water nipple. So this is how it looks. You have your hot water nipple, the water flows through these little openings here uh, and into your house through the supply line. Uh, but today, because this is a 100 gallon, we have them uh, separately installed through the top of the tank. It's two of them. They also separately installed on the ream or root water heater, as well as all Aosmith products. That will be Aosmith, Whirlpool, Kenmore, State, uh, and uh, the other uh, brand names they make. Okay, let's get to it. I want to show you where they are located. So basically you're looking for an opening like this, like this. This particular one is marked, it says inner. It actually had this uh, plug right here, which I already removed. Um, I have been here about two years ago. I already replaced uh, those inner rods once. So this uh, homeowner is really particular about his water heater. He understands the importance of maintaining good uh, inner rods uh, in order to prolong the life of the tank. So we're doing it again uh, today. Uh, once I pull them uh, out, I will show you uh, in what condition they are. As I said, they are already two years old. The tool we're using is this uh, socket. It's one inch and one sixteen in size or 27 millimeter um, in the metric system. And we need uh, a ratchet. I think this is like uh, 18 inches long. And uh, place it like this. Uh, make sure you have the water turned off first to the house. I also turned off that valve there um, to the house and the one at the water heater. I did open some faucets inside to release the pressure. So once you put the tool right here, it go like this. And here you go. It goes. Let's see if we have something left there. not completely dissolved after two years absolutely nothing originally this was looking like this two years ago past two years and this thing is completely gone all right we are ready to place the the new one in go like this and uh Usually I use the blue monster tape to wrap around the thread and they put a little bit of this white uh, paste, uh, but I run out of uh, the blue tape. That will be just good enough. The manufacturer in fact only uses this white paste when they screw on the fittings on the water heaters. Go like this, catch the thread the right way. And you can tell it's the right way if you are able to make multiple turns with just your fingers. Okay, go like this. It's amazing. After two years, they completely dissolve. So basically, this is when your water heater starts rusting. Once these inner rods are gone. And the rusting process takes about two to three years before the tank is leaking.
All right, that, that is good enough. Working on the second one, I actually realized I have uh, another ratchet that allows for this uh, convenient motion where you don't have to pull it out and reset it again. Uh, once you get to this point, you can remove the socket and just go like this. Man, this one is gone too. So two of them completely dissolved in two years. And they are. One habit I have is when I work on uh, old threaded connection once i remove the the fixture that i'm replacing any valve attached to the water heater i would stick a um, a towel in and try to clean that uh, thread the female thread as much as i can uh, sometimes i will even stick a uh, uh, brush in That's there cool. all right th this is why you need a sausage style air rod if you don't have enough room on top of your water heater. Let's make sure we get it right. All right. As long as you can make multiple turns, maybe like five, six or seven by hand, it means you got it right. The thread is going right. All right, so I'll switch this over now here. This is good enough. I will be replacing them in two years again, so I don't want to tie them too much. All right, it's all done. Everything in place like we were never here. I also flushed it. It was pretty good. Nothing came out. All right, guys, uh, that was for today. Please stick around because I will add some more information after this uh, chapter uh, in regards to the inner rods. Now that you have seen how you can replace the inner rod of your water heater, I want to talk uh, about them a little bit more. There's a few things you need to know. If you're a basic person and you don't have any kind of water purification in your home, that's for your whole house, for the whole plumbing, you shouldn't worry about your water heater that much. Your water heater will still last you 12 to 15 years, even with the original uh, inner rod. However, if you have a water softener or one of those uh, charcoal-based water purification systems for the whole house, um, you need to pay attention to the inner rods of your water heater. They need to be replaced every two years. Uh, they do, in fact, dissolve by the time they're two years old. The problem is more prominent with the soft uh, water softeners, with the ones that use salt, with the salt water softeners, and a little bit less prominent with the uh, charcoal-based systems, uh, but it's still there. This is what happens. When you remove the minerals from the water, then the water is naturally looking to attract those minerals again. Uh, and uh, what it does is attacks the softest metal in your plumbing system, being the sacrificial rod. So your sacrificial rod is gone in uh, two years, and then um, the rusting of your tank begins. It takes about three years by the time your tank is completely leaking, uh, but you will probably uh, notice um, brownish water come out, coming out of your tops after a year, year and a half. Uh, so yes, I see quite often brand new water heaters, just five years old, leaking uh, due to this fact. Uh, homes that have water softeners, the inner rod has not been replaced. Worst case scenario, five years. I mean, some will last longer, will go seven, eight, but that's about it. Uh, this is why you need to check the inner rods 
or hire someone to do it for you and replace them, keep them in good uh, working order so your tank is protected and lasts you a long time. Uh, now, what kind of inner rods are there? There is a magnesium inner rod that's the most common that uh, manufacturers put in the water heaters um, when they build them. Uh, and there's also the aluminum zinc one. Uh, there used to be a zinc only, and you can probably still find it, but uh, that is probably a little um, unhealthy uh, because zinc is harmful. Uh, and that's why the norm now is to build the aluminum zinc inner rod. Uh, to replace the zinc only rod. So I think uh, the aluminum zinc is the better way to go because it lasts longer. It can take a little bit more abuse. It lasts longer and also fights the sulfur smell. So if you get that rotten egg smell out of your plumbing system, that's because the bacteria reacts in a specific way with, with the magnesium rod. Uh, and um, the way to fight that is to replace your inner rod with a aluminum zinc one. Zinc alone will be best to fight that uh, sulfur smell uh, but as I said it's not a good idea to get zinc only because zinc is uh, harmful. Also uh, pay attention to the fact that um, these two different uh, connection uh, types for those inner rods. It could either be a single inner rod with a hex head or it could be a combination inner rod that combines the inner rod itself with the hot water nipple. So check um, and make sure before you go ahead and purchase it. Uh, the other difference is um, in the style. So uh, when you buy a water heater, the manufacturer puts a uh, the long stick, single piece. It's about uh, 44 inches long. Uh, but when it comes time for replacement, you should probably get uh, the one that looks like a sausage uh, because oftentimes there's a space limitation on top of your water heater and you might not be able to uh, fit the new one in. Um, you can always pull the old one out. It's already dissolved and it's soft. You can bend it, uh, but you, you won't be able to put the new one in. That's why if your space is limited, if you have less than four feet on top of your water heater, get the sausage style. I also like to uh, touch on tankless water heaters. Now, uh, we do have problem with leaking heat exchangers on tankless water heaters as well when there's a uh, water softener in the house. Not all the time. But it happens, even after two years, a two-year-old tankless water heater will develop a heat exchanger leak and we wonder why. So I think um, when you have a water softener or water purification system that attacks the, the seams of the heat exchanger, uh, or in other words, the solder job, because they build them out of uh, stainless steel or copper, which is quite durable, uh, but in, in order to put it together, they still do some solder job, they use some uh, solder materials to put together the pieces and I think um, this is what the soft water uh, attacks those seams so we get to deal with leaking heat exchangers on tankless water heaters as well. Uh, in other words uh, water softeners, water purification system give you the convenience and the comfort of not getting itchy skin after a shower uh, or don't getting those white buildups around your um, uh, plumbing fixtures but at the same time uh, they sacrifice the life of the water heater. This is why it's important uh, to maintain good uh, operational inner rods. And I want to add something. Now, the process that occurs inside the water heater that causes the um, dissolution of the uh, inner rod is called electrolysis. Actually, uh, as of today, there is a new kind of inner rod available that um, is based on electrical waves. So it's all electronic. Uh, it's an electrical rod that you screw into the water heater, you plug it in, and then that rod sends the right and proper uh, electromagnetic waves um, that uh, still protect your water heater. Uh, but the good thing about it is it doesn't dissolve, it lasts you forever. I think it works. They use it in um, in gas tanks at the gas stations that are underground. They use it with submarines. So I think it works. It's something you can uh, give it a try. Now, I will include link to that new electro uh, mechanical rod as well as all other parts you might need for this job down in the description below. I'll be really happy to see you get this job done yourself. All right guys, that was for today. I really appreciate you. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video and hit the notification bell. Let's build this channel together. I'll see you in the next one.